slip because we had folks from the tech industry to folks that I work with Teach for America, and we were addressing the relevance of the NAACP now in today's time, and why isn't the conversation being had about the NAACP being, uh, you know, hey, uh, hey, okay, why the NAACP is not um, a part of the conversation right. as much as they were. Right. And when we see this, the NAACP was literally Active. the right. legal counsel, the legal defense mm -hmm. for situations that that span well across the country. And and we and, and it was it was beautiful because they were there because they wanted to figure out how can we be back relevant because we're still working and we're still doing these things but people don't know that the NAACP is still fighting. The NAACP right, is still, still doing right. a whole lot of a lot of work and very, very much engaged. I'm a life member by the way, so if y'all need to, you know, learn more about that, you should it. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, what you you want to speak to that uh, with the and, and, and I also want you to say Yes. Uh, in fact we're having a speaking we're having a listening tour on October 26. You hear that? Listen. A listening tour on October 26 at the LA Marriott. Now we'll have some, we'll have our national people coming out, uh, our interim director, um, our, our chairman of the board and whatnot. And we want to hear what you, what you have to say about the NAACP and its relevance in today's market. Um, people like myself, I love the NAACP, you know, the, I spend all my days in retirement thinking that I should be uh, going to cruises, but it really takes a village of all of us to really understand how we keep the NAACP and other organizations going. Now, let me just say this, the NAACP is not the only organization out there. Absolutely. I mean, it's not a one horse deal. And many of your cores still around, SCLC is still around, National Action Network is around. Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is still around. Talk about it. You know, so that there are choices, but NAACP is moving in a direction that many of y'all may not understand because, see, we have lobbyists in Congress. We go at the people who really help to make the laws that's going to make it happen for you. We have 12 chapters in Los Angeles. I'm the area director over all of them. All of them trying to do what's best for you. But keep in mind, they're all volunteers. They're all citizens just like you who want to make a change and make a difference in your community in order to make it work. So even though I'm not here on a membership drive, I encourage all of y'all yes. to join the NAACP. Because we need you. I, I approve that message. <laughs> um, so I want to say that the NAACP, Black Lives Matter, um, what, earlier this year, Black Lives Matter said that they wanted to approach things a little bit differently. And they wanted to get more into um, building at the local level, right? Because it's about getting involved in making change at the local level with your local government, getting out to vote, getting other people out to vote. Show up to the police commission every Tuesday. Right? People get arrested in those police commission meetings, and I want to tell you that it's important because a lot of the stuff that they pass has a direct impact on us. And if we're not there to see it, it goes, it happens without us even having a say in it. And that's a civilian oversight board. So they're supposed to have our best interests at heart. Um, so getting involved, informing yourselves, like that's super, super important. That's why I do what I do. And I just encourage, if you, don't, if you don't read me on the roof, read something every day and be informed on the issues because, again, all of this is going to happen around us. And if we don't pay attention, if we don't get involved, if we don't get out and vote, if we don't go see the NAACP, if we don't get involved with Black Lives Matter, we're going to miss it all. And this is our opportunity to make this our movement and to do something about it. Yeah, I, I agree. We got to wrap this up. I, this this could be the, real good. Um, uh, be engaged, beautiful people of every color, of every religious background, every cultural experience. Be engaged. There was a lot of matters that were uh, dealt with from uh, women's rights. You saw how the lady said, I'm for a woman. 
you know, and and uh, from military, you know, he served in the military. And he was like, did you not honor your country? He's like, that's not true. I did honor my country. And, you know, it, it was race relations. There was rape. There's... Uh, you know, I don't know if y'all noticed the flag in the bar that was owned by the black man. That, these are significant moments for us to realize we're not removed from this stuff. We got to engage. Marshall, make sure you get some folks out. This movie is worth it. When it, hit, when it hits the theaters, I think on the 13th. The 13th of October. Man, you know what you're talking about. That's what you should be moderated. Can you make it quick? It's going to be so right now. I want to say, mm. I'm 80 years old myself. Yes. Okay? I sat here through this movie, and this movie was so electrifying from the beginning all the way to the end. Yes. It's not one of those movies where you hit it a little bit, you miss it a little bit. <laughs> this was electrifying. I want all the people that was involved in putting this movie together, I want all of them to get kudos. Stand up, sir. What's your name? My name is J.R. Star with a double R. <laughs> your mama, your, your daddy knew. Your daddy knew. Your granddaddy knew. Mr. Star, we salute you and we thank you for staying in this thing. And as I was saying, I was in two wars. I was in the Korean War and also in the Vietnam War. I ended one and started the other. Put your hands together for Mr. Star. Beautiful people, my name is Major. These are our panelists. I'm Rip Singh, Son Wo, Monique Judge, Ron Hassan, Marshall. Make some noise for love, beautiful people.